47. Glory and praise to our God, 547. Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we join together this morning on this feast day of John Chrysostom, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God, and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, who will that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should, by should be illustrious in, by his wonderful eloquence and his experience of suffering. Grant us, we pray, that, instructed by his teachings, we may be strengthened through the example of his invincible patience. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, 
prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Hear the sound of my pleading when I cry to you, lifting up my hands toward your holy shrine. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I find help. Then my heart exalts, and with my song, I give him thanks. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is the strength of his people, the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed them and carry them forever. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them, and when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I, too, am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise when 
we celebrate this feast day of St. John Chrysostom, we talk about something that is very, someone rather, that is very interesting in terms of their journey of faith. Because from a young age, St. John Chrysostom lost his father, and it was left to his mother to raise both him and his sibling in the ways of the faith. With John in particular, his mother made sure that he was receiving every last gift he could for the ability to share this uh, gift of faith in that he got the best teachers in rhetoric and the best teachers in knowledge of the world. And he got to the point where really John could have done anything he wanted, but he felt a tug towards God to serve him in his church. So that's what he ended up doing, first becoming a monk, then a priest, and then ultimately a reluctant bishop because of the fact that it threw him into what we would call the not only the ecclesial politics of the day, but the natural politics of the day as well, because of the fact that when you enter into that realm, that's kind of come with, comes with the job. So St. John went to work, and the reason he has that last name Chrysostom is because of the fact it literally means golden mouth translated. In other words, he was so eloquent with speech that he had a very powerful way about sharing the gospel that many would ultimately come to live out this gift of faith during the course of his lifetime. But John didn't stop there because John ultimately had to engage things he would have rather left alone in the fact that in serving in Constantinople, or as we know it nowadays, modern day Istanbul, he would basically share the gospel, but he would also get into trouble with all the right people, so to speak, namely the empress of the time who was serving there and would call people out if they weren't living a life of God. This got John into trouble so much that sometimes he was exiled from, again, the midst of where he was supposed to serve, even as a bishop, and would go through very hard trials where his sleep would obviously suffer in the midst of being exiled. And he had a stomach ailment for most of the part of his life, so carrying that form of suffering with him as well made nothing easy. But he stayed faithful. He shared the gift of the faith, even to the detriment of his own self and during the course of his life won many converts for the faith. There's a reason even in the Eastern Church that we still have the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom today that is still celebrated around the world in the Eastern Rite of Catholicism. So we have a lot from St. John to really thank him for, and we have many of his writings still, but we have to understand he was fearless in sharing the faith. His top priority was to share the faith of Jesus Christ without worry about what would come after. Now, that is something to ponder, my dear friends, in our own time. Because do we count the cost before we give that gift of faith to others? Do we start to do a little moral calculus in our souls, wondering what will happen if I actually push ahead and share this gift? Is somebody going to be upset with me? Is somebody going to get mad at me? Am I going to maybe have to really uh, reevaluate here a friendship, not on my end, but is it going to be reevaluated for me if I share this gift of faith? Those are things that can come into our own hearts. But a line that I saw not too long ago was basically what we could call this line of idolatry in the sense that idol is anything we have to check in with before we do God's will. It's something to ponder is if we're grabbing onto things that are not God's will, so much so that when he asks us to do something, we have to check with this thing before we engage. He wants to bring our hearts in full, not the 50 or 60 or 70 or 80%, not even 90 or 95% or 99. He wants our whole hearts. To live out of that way of faith means, again, we have to challenge at times or even allow ourselves to be challenged at times as we go on this journey. So with all that in mind, we ask for St. John's intercession this morning as we pray together. St. John Chrysostom, pray for us.
trusting in our Lord and Savior, we bring our prayers before him this day. For mutual respect and care among, pe among peoples, we pray to the Lord. For peaceful resolution to invasions and occupations and conflict, we pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering, that they may know the peace of God in trial, we pray to the Lord. For healing of body and spirit, for those who are ill, we pray to the Lord. For life among all people of goodwill, who have gone before us, that they may see God face to face in heaven, we pray to the Lord. And as we remember Mary Bailey in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we ask your abundant grace and mercy to be poured out into our hearts, that we may live according to your will in our lives, just as St. John Chrysostom did during the course of his time on earth. We place everything into your hands, Lord, and ask that you pour out your abundance of grace. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, you become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present in commemoration of St. John Chrysostom be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Chrysostom you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, Keep her safe and answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with the, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, we proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And we pray this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray together the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day, everyone. Our recessional hymn is number 547, 547.